Hi, I'm Chef Alan Tatro with Global Sugar Art, and welcome to part three of candy making. And today we are going to go over how to make a 3D mold. Actually, it's a two-piece mold that we put together, we fill with chocolate, and you get a nice three-dimensional uh, figure out of it. With the Easter season upon us, I thought today's theme would be Easter candies. So that's one of the things we're going to do. We're also going to make some peanut butter filled eggs and some coconut bonbons as well as some lollipops and some two-dimensional bunnies uh, to show you how you can decorate those if you don't want to go through all the bother of making that traditional three-dimensional bunny. In part one video that is already out on YouTube, I have all the basics of candy making, how to care for your molds, how to wash them, how to buff them so you get a beautiful shine on your chocolate, how to melt your chocolate, and how to care for the chocolates when you're packaging them. So I'm not going to be going through all that detail today. I'll mention a few things here and there, but please, if you've never done uh, candy making with a compound coating like Merkin's chocolate or Guitard uh, candy coatings, Please do watch the first video and it will give you all the basics of what we're going to be doing today. So today I'm going to be working with um, a lot of different molds. Uh, this is the traditional classic Easter Bunny. And the molds are two-sided. They come as one piece. Um, sometimes if they're small, you'll get actually four of them on a, uh, on a card and all you do is cut them in half and put them together. And I'll be going through that with you as well. So again, before you use your molds, just make sure that you wash them thoroughly with just hot water, dry them, and buff them with a nice lint-free, like a flour sack cloth or something that will be lint-free. And don't be afraid to really get in there and buff them. The better they're buffed, the nicer the chocolates are, are going to look at the end. They'll have a beautiful shine if you do that. Um, so let's get started and make some Easter candy. The first thing I'm going to do today is show you how to make a three-dimensional um, Easter Bunny. Now, when you get the mold, they almost always come as one section. The, the bunny that I'm going to use today is this one right here. And when it arrived, it was together like that. So all you do is take a pair of scissors and cut right down that center line. And it's, it's very simple. It's, it's, um, it's soft plastic and you can cut right through it very easily. Other molds that we'll be using today, uh, I have Easter egg molds. Uh, we're going to be doing the coconut bonbons, a couple different bunnies, and we're also going to be making peanut butter um, eggs as well. So I'm just going to put those aside. I have this mold already cut in half, and you'll notice on the mold there are two little buttons or uh, little pop-outs, and there are two more on the other side. So when you put this mold together, all you have to do is line up those two little spots and they don't snap together. That's strictly for an alignment so you know how to put it together. So to begin with, we're going to paint the inside of the mold so that we can get the details painted on the, uh, on the front and the back of, of the bunny. So I've used these little glass, uh, little glass cups. You can use a little, any little dish that you have I've put some very hot water in a cake pan, not boiling, but probably about 190, maybe 200 degrees at the most. And I set my different colors of chocolate in there and I just let them melt gradually. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a very small paintbrush. I like to do this sitting down, it's a little easier. I'm going to use a very small paintbrush and I'm going to begin with the finest details on here. Now, if you look at the eyes, the pupil is blue and the iris is yellow. And that's the typical color scheme that you see for Easter bunnies uh, in the United States, uh, for the chocolate bunnies. So in order to get the yellow on the background, I have to paint the blue first. So you're going to want to always paint the outermost color first. So when I look at my mold, I can see the rounded areas where I'm going to be painting that blue. So to begin with, I'm going to use my light blue in a very small paintbrush. When you, when you dip the paintbrush in the chocolate, just sort of twirl it so that it doesn't um, sort of fall off in, in a string. Um, because if the chocolate is dripping off of the paintbrush, it'll splatter inside your mold 
and then you'll have little spots of color inside the mold. If that does happen, there is a, a way to fix that, and I will show you that. So I'm just very carefully, with a small brush, painting the blue on the inside of this. And always turn the mold around and look at it from the front so that you can see that all the details that you want to paint are covered in chocolate. And I can see a little spot in the eyeball that's not covered. So I'm going to go back with a little bit more chocolate and I'm going to fill that over. There. Okay, now I would want to put yellow on next. If I were to take a paintbrush and put yellow chocolate on here right now, the heat of the yellow chocolate would melt the blue that I just put on there and I would have green. I would have sort of a mess. So I need to let this chocolate harden before I add another coat of chocolate, which will be the yellow behind it. So when you're doing layers of chocolate, always make sure you let the first layer dry completely. So I'm going to move on now and I'm going to do the, um, the pink of the ears. It's less like painting and more like just putting the chocolate in place and it sort of flows where you want it to go. And I'm going to do both sides. The fun part about this is you can do as much or as little detail as you want. Uh, when we do one of the other bunnies, you'll see that I'm just going to do the eye. And you'll, you'll see when we unmold it that it, just doing that one piece has quite a nice impact. So there are the ears. And it looks like I filled those in okay. And now I'm going to do the nose. And I think that's it for the nose. Um, and I'm going to do a little bit of white for the teeth. You want to be thinking about what color um, chocolate you're going to use for the whole mold. In this case, because I'm going to be using either a milk chocolate or dark chocolate, all of these colors will show. If I wanted to do a white chocolate bunny, my white teeth wouldn't show. So you'd maybe, maybe do the mouth pink behind the teeth and do the teeth white in front of it. Um, that's one way of getting it to show on a white chocolate. And now we're going to do the, the carrot. And we're going to start with the green at the top, the carrot. And I'll make sure that that's covered, and it is. And the last thing I'm going to do is the carrot itself. And this is a pretty big piece, so I'm using a little larger brush. Remember to twirl that chocolate up on the brush so it doesn't drip. Okay, I've got the carrot just about all done. And again, I'm going to turn this around and look at it. And I can see that his little paws are holding the carrot and the rest of the carrot looks filled in pretty well. If you see a little air bubble, just go back with your paintbrush and push on the back and move that chocolate around to get rid of the air bubble. You can even sometimes use a toothpick to push in there and get rid of any air bubbles. So now if I just touch the eyes, that chocolate is now um, hardened. So now I can take my yellow and I can do the rest of the eye. So I'm going to go follow the mold and go all around it.
often if I'm doing painted chocolates for a holiday or a project, I'll take all my molds out and decide what color is going to go where. And while I've got a brush in my hand and I'm doing yellow, I do yellow on every mold that I have out that I want to use. Um, it saves a lot of time. So normally if I'm doing a lot of bunnies, I'll do all the eyes at one time and then all the ears. Just makes it easier. Okay. And there are the eyes. So that front of the mold is now completed. I'm going to put a little bit more green in because it doesn't quite look thick enough to me. I think if I added some dark chocolate in here right now it would show through that green so I added a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to set that aside. You can either leave it at room temperature for 15 or 20 minutes, or even better, put it in the refrigerator. Not the freezer. It has to go in the refrigerator. A very thin layer of chocolate like that will crack if you, take, um, if you put it in the freezer. The minute it comes out and hits room temperature, it'll just crack. So make sure you put it in the refrigerator only. And I'm going to take some white, and I'm going to do the little tail at the back. This is a pretty big section to paint. Okay, and again, I'm going to let this dry for a few seconds, or for a few minutes, I should say. And that's just a little bunny tail. I'm going to let that dry. I do see a little bit of daylight through there, uh, but because it's such a large piece, I'm going to let this dry a few minutes, and then I'm going to recoat it with another coat of white chocolate. And then I'm going to put both of these in the refrigerator, and then when, when it's ready, after about five minutes, We'll add the dark chocolate to it and show you how to clamp it together and create the three-dimensional bunny. So I'll be finishing this up. I'm now ready to fill this two-piece mold uh, so that I have a hollow bunny. One of the most important things, and I can't stress this enough, is if you take really hot melted chocolate and you pour it in this mold and you start turning that around to make sure it's all covered, it will melt all this colored chocolate and you're going to have a mess. So the most important thing that you're going to do is after your chocolate is melted is to just slowly cool this down. And I actually have a thermometer here, an instant reading thermometer, and I'm getting this down to about 90, 92 degrees. And you can still, you can see that it's still very um, liquidy. It'll pour beautifully for me, but it doesn't really feel very warm and it won't melt this chocolate. So I'm going to take the back of the bunny, which is the deeper part, and I'm going to pour in about, I'm going to fill this about two-thirds full. I'm not going to worry about the ears because they're going to get filled up. There we go. All right. And now I'm going to align the two little holes. There's one right here and one right there. And I'm using regular old paper clamps. You can use uh, clothespins as well. And I'm going to put one at each end and two on each side. And this is going to hold it in place for me. Once that's done, now I'm going to tip this mold upside down and I'm just gradually going to roll it over. That chocolate is very liquidy in there, so if you go from side to side and back and forth, just really gradually and go all around, it'll fill in. And I see the back is nicely filled in. I look at the front and it's filled in. I had one little air hole there, so I was tilting it in that direction to make sure that the air hole was gone and I see another one there. Sometimes if you tap it a little bit, the air hole will disappear. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this face down in my refrigerator just like this 
and I'm going to set my timer for four minutes. While my larger mold is uh, cooling in the refrigerator, I'm going to do um, a two-dimensional bunny. Now, this is a 3D mold. If I cut this in half, these two pieces would go together to create a full three-dimensional bunny that could either be solid or filled. Excuse me, solid or hollow. But I've decided that I just want to use a half of this bunny. And you can see that one right over here in this, this little white bunny. So I'm going to begin by doing the eye. This one's going to have very little detail. So I'm just going to put a little dot in the eye of blue. Okay, and it's very hard to see, but a little piece of the chocolate pulled away as I was pulling out of that little eye. So now I have a little string of blue chocolate coming out. So this is a great time to show you how you can fix that. You can let that dry uh, maybe 10 or 15 seconds and just use another paintbrush and you can just pull that right out and it just removed that chocolate. I just pushed it right into the other chocolate. If it was a large spill inside the mold, you can actually use a Q-tip. I had one here, but anyway, a regular Q-tip can be used and you can clean the inside of the mold with a Q-tip. So that's a very, very easy way. So I'm gonna let the blue dry a little bit and I'm gonna go on and I'm gonna use the blue on these lollipops. There are a lot of different great Easter lollipop molds available. And kids love making these and of course they love eating them, but this is a great project to do with children. So I'm gonna put my two little blue dots. And let's see, this mold, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mold this solid with no additional painting on it at all. And that is now dry enough. I'm gonna add the yellow behind it. Sometimes, if you realize you have too much chocolate on the brush, just get rid of a little bit, a little bit of it before you actually get into the mold. There. And now I have my little bunny eyes on that one all done. And we can do the the eyes on here now. This is really a lot easier than it looks. <laughs> it's sort of paint by numbers. There's a there's a, a line and a place to put all the chocolate right in there. You're not guessing where everything goes. So now I have my, my mold ready for the, uh, for the lollipop. So I'm going to put both of these in the refrigerator, give them about two or three minutes for that chocolate to harden up, and then we're going to fill all these molds. Okay, the eyes have, have uh, hardened. They've been in the refrigerator. So now I'm ready to put some chocolate in these. And we're going to do one out of milk chocolate. You can use a spoon, but this is a fairly large mold. So I'm just going to add it in there gradually. And then I'm going to start tapping it. And you can see it'll start spreading out. Then I realize that I need more chocolate. It's easier to add it now. It doesn't need a lot more. And let's see, we can do a white one too. The reason I'm tapping it is I want all the air bubbles to come to the surface and they just pop as soon as they hit the surface. 
and I'll top this off with a little bit more chocolate and those are ready for the refrigerator now just to clarify this is a solid piece of chocolate now this isn't a shell this is a solid piece so I can either put it in the refrigerator for about 15 or 20 minutes or I can put this in the freezer for about five or six minutes I'm going to choose uh, uh, to put this in the freezer so that you can see how they unmold when they come out. It's no different, but because it's a solid piece, I can now use the freezer. So we'll put these in the freezer. For, for any uh, lollipop mold, you want to have your lollipop sticks ready. Again, I've painted the detail that I wanted and I've let that chill in the refrigerator for a few minutes until it's solid. And then I'm just going to go ahead and fill these. Um, if you have a lot of lollipops to do, it's really helpful to use um, a squeeze bottle. And I'll be using one on one of the other projects later on in this video. Uh, so you don't always have to use a spoon. Especially when you're using or when you're making really small lollipops. Don't overfill it the first time. And then just tap it on the counter and the bubbles will come up. And then lay the lollipop stick in and then turn it. And that enrobes the chocolate all the way around the lollipop. When you do use the squeeze bottles, it makes it a lot easier for kids uh, to make these lollipops. They're not quite as steady with a spoon as you would be. Okay, and that filled it perfectly. Put the stick in and roll it around to make sure it's covered. And then these can go right in the freezer. These are a solid piece of chocolate now, so they can go in the freezer. And that will take about probably five or 10 minutes until they're chill all the way through. And then we'll pop them out of here. You can always tell when they're done, if you touch the back and it feels cool, then the, uh, the um, the chocolate is ready to unmold. Okay, we have some of our pieces ready right out of the freezer. I think we'll do the, um, the lollipops first. Now notice I'm wearing some uh, inexpensive uh, cotton candy gloves uh, for candy makers. These are inexpensive. Uh, we carry these on our website and they come in different sizes. Your body temperature will melt chocolate. So if you start touching these chocolates after they're finished, it'll melt the chocolate and it will leave fingerprints on the chocolate. So you should have some sort of a glove on your hand. I'm just gonna t put, the, just all I did was turn those over and they pop right out. Those would be beautiful in any children's Easter basket. It's, it's a great treat and it's something they actually can make themselves. The larger ones, you can see how easily they pop right out. I love this mold because it has the nice detail of the fur on it. And this one, all we did was the eye. That's all we painted. And the same with this little guy. We just did the eye. And notice because we used the right and the left side of the mold, we have a right and left facing bunny. So if we were to cut this and put it together, then we'd have a three dimensional single bunny like the, like the larger one that we're gonna unmold in a minute. Uh, but if you do them as a 2D, you get a right and a left facing. So now we'll grab the big bunny and we'll do that one. Okay, it's time for the reveal for the big Easter bunny. So I'm just going to remove these clips. Now, before I take this apart, I want to remind you that after I fill this, I put it in the refrigerator face down for four minutes. And then I flipped it back over and I left it for about another four minutes and then I flipped it over a third time and I left it in for a good 45 to 50 minutes. Um, you want to make sure this is completely chilled before you try to unmold it. Hold it so that the face is up and then just gently start separating the chocolate. And if it's cold enough, it should come right apart. And you'll see that that lifts right off. And then you can just rest it in your hand and just gently pull that top and it will come right off. So there's the back of the bunny and there's the front of the bunny. And you've successfully completed a hollow 3D traditional Easter bunny. 
It's, a, it's something that any child would love to have in their Easter basket. And you can also use it as a decoration on a, uh, a table um, or a cake or whatever you really would like to do. So that's the basics of making the bunnies. I'm going to move on and we'll show you how to do the peanut butter filled eggs and the coconut bonbons. One of my children's favorite treats at Easter time was always the peanut butter filled eggs. And I want to show you how to make these today. This is a nice large um, Easter egg mold that I really like. It has a nice design on the top. They look great as a solid piece or you can paint the tops. And I wanted to show you another way of painting a mold that's not as detailed as using a paintbrush. And I have a jar of warm water here. Uh, you can just use really hot tap water. And these are the uh, CK Candy Writers. And they actually have the same Merkins chocolate inside these tubes. So when you get the tubes, they're rock hard, just like chocolate would be. So you have to heat them up gradually. You don't want to put them in a microwave because if you get the chocolate too hot, it seizes up and it becomes like, um, like a thick plaster. It won't flow anymore. So if you can't put your hand on the jar or your finger in the water without burning it, it's, it's okay. If you burn it, then it's too hot. I would say no more than 90 to 100 degrees. And I'm just kneading this to get all that chocolate um, melted and smooth in there. And let's see if I have a little dish here. And I've already taken a knife and I've cut a little end off of this because when you purchase these, they're sealed. So I've cut a little tip off. I'm just gonna flip my mold over and all you do is squeeze it out of the tube right into your mold. Now it does help if you still want to use a, a small paintbrush to just gently move that chocolate around and get it into all the, the finer details around the edge. And that's it. And then just tap it on the counter and that will get all the air bubbles out and it will smooth it out for you. And then just turn it over and take a look at it and make sure you've covered all the details that you want to cover. But you can see by using one of these on a larger decoration, it's much faster. The nicest part is when you're done, put the cat back on and you can throw these in the, in the freezer and you can keep them until the next time you make chocolates. They'll last months and months and months in your freezer as long as you've sealed them up again and just reheat them next time you're ready to use them. So this is a great economical way uh, to do painted chocolates as well. So that's how you would prepare the mold for the, uh, for the chocolate uh, Easter eggs with the peanut butter filling. Now, I also need to do a chocolate shell, but before I can add dark chocolate in here to create that shell for the peanut butter filling, I have to make sure this is completely hardened. So I'm gonna refrigerate this for about five minutes. Again, don't freeze it, just refrigerate it. So the, the one orange decoration that I had piped in using the candy writer is now chilled and that's firm. So now I can make my chocolate shells. So I'm gonna make one plain chocolate and then we'll do one with the orange. So for this, I'm gonna add just a little bit of chocolate in each one. I'm not gonna fill it. I just, I want about a teaspoon or a teaspoon and a half of chocolate. And I'm gonna use a candy brush. This is a, a typical 3 8 inch candy brush. If I were making smaller chocolates, I would use um, probably a quarter inch brush. And I'm just gonna go in the inside and I'm gently brushing this chocolate up on the sides. And this is known as making a shell. Try not to go over the top. If you have too much, just scoop it out with your brush and I have just a little bit too much in these. So I'm going to take a little out. And that looks pretty good. Now, just like when you were painting the pieces, you want to make sure there are no um, bare spots. So what you do is you put it up and you look underneath it. And if you see a spot where you can see right through it, then you know you've missed a spot and you can just go back with your brush. 
Sometimes you can just roll them around a little bit for a second and the chocolate will even out. Now I need to let these harden before I fill them with the peanut butter filling. So because this is a shell, this is not a solid piece of chocolate, this is going to go in the refrigerator for about five minutes. Now I'm going to make some shells for the bonbons as well and I'll show you how to make the filled bonbons. <clears throat> I have a tray here with several different colors of uh, bonbons which are very uh, uh, traditional for Easter. And what a lot of people like to do is use the regular coconut filling in them and you can use a lemon flavored chocolate or an orange flavored chocolate um, or you can just plain use white chocolate and color it. So you can add different flavors. Of course you can make cream fillings as well. You can make all sorts of fruit cream fillings. So the bonbons are going to be done the same way. I'm going to add a little bit of chocolate. And then I'm going to use my brush and I'm going to paint it right up the sides. Filled chocolates are basically all done the same way. Whether you're making a a caramel or a, um, this has a little bit too much, um, or a cream filled chocolate, uh, the coconut um, bonbons. Let's see. There, I think that's all I need. I put a little bit too much in those, so I'm just taking a little out. And that looks pretty good. And if I look at the bottom, I don't see any daylight through there, so these are good. Now I'll put these in the refrigerator for about five minutes, and when they're solid, we'll take them out, we'll fill the coconut bonbons, and we'll put the, the um, we'll backfill them, and we'll do the same thing with the peanut butter eggs, and then we'll unmold them after they've been in the freezer for a few minutes. Okay, my shells are ready for the peanut butter eggs and the coconut bonbons. I've made my coconut bonbon mix. My recipe is right on um, our website at globalsugarart.com. Um, it's basically three quarters a cup of caro syrup or light corn syrup. Bring it to a boil and add two and a half cups of desiccated coconut. Now desiccated coconut is a dried, very finely shredded coconut. It's not the coconut you would buy in a grocery store like they sometimes refer to it as angel flake coconut where it has a long flake. That's a different, uh, different type of coconut. So I just made this into a little ball and this just gently press that into your mold. Don't push really hard or you could crack that chocolate. But the surface of the filling needs to be lower than the mold because you have to backfill these. You have to fill these with chocolate in order to seal that in. And that's the coconut. And we'll move on to the peanut butter. And the peanut butter recipe is also on my website. And I'm just going to add that right in there. That one has a little bit too much. I would rather be safe than sorry and not be able to get the chocolate on the back, so I'm taking a little bit of that out. And those are ready. <clears throat> and now I'm going to fill the back of those with chocolate. <clears throat> use the same chocolate you used to make the shell and just pour it on the back and just use your spoon and make sure that it goes right to the edge. You have to seal the back of these, um, particularly if you want to keep the chocolates for a while and you want them to stay fresh. The filling does not need to be refrigerated, so once these chocolates are made, you can keep them in a uh, storage container in a cool place and they'll last for a long time, unless the kids find them. And just like before, just tap that down. And now I have a solid piece of chocolate. I can put that either in the refrigerator or the freezer.
And again, if you wanted to use your little bottle, your squeeze bottle to backfill these, that would be a great, a great time to use that. I just need a little bit more. To, you want to make sure these are sealed. And they are. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and chill these now. I'm going to give them a good five or ten minutes until they're firm, and then we'll pop them out and we'll see what they look like. Okay, our peanut butter eggs and our coconut bonbons are now ready. Again, I've got some gloves on. You can see the beautiful shine you get on these. If you make sure that you buff the mold and it's clean between every time, between every time you fill these and, and you do a batch, you'll have really nice looking chocolates. And you can tell when these are ready. They pop right out of the, uh, of the mold. There's the one that we did the uh, chocolate on, and there's the plain one. So those are the peanut butter eggs and your coconut bonbons. So next we're going to go on to some basic filled chocolates. Uh, basically we're going to be doing these small Easter eggs and I'm going to show you how to do the polka dot and how to do the striping with chocolate. For the little Easter eggs that I did on the bottom here, those are a solid egg. They're very small so they'd be very difficult to fill. So I pre-filled some white and milk chocolate. But I wanted to show you if you're doing a lot of chocolates, we sell different size of squeeze bottles, um, and these are just two of the sizes that I carry. So I've put some of the melted dark chocolate in this squeeze bottle, and um, let me just get this. Just like I did with the candy writer, I, have, I had warm water in here, and I just had that sitting in the warm water. And every once in a while, I just give it a, a shake back and forth gradually, uh, lightly. You don't want to shake air bubbles into it, but you want to keep that chocolate moving so that it all stays melted. But you'll be able to fill these much easier. It's much quicker than using a spoon. And you can see if you had a lollipop and you had all the little different details like the ears and stuff that you wanted to, to get that chocolate into that area, the squeeze bottle is much easier to use. There. And that's it. And somewhat like the candy writers, all I have to do is put the cover on this and I can keep this probably in the refrigerator for several weeks. When you're ready to use it again, open the cover, fill it back up with chocolate, and then put it in some warm water and let it all melt and come to the same temperature. And just keep gradually moving it back and forth so that it all mixes together. You, so you can have several colors all lined up to do a whole project. Last thing is just drop them on the counter lightly and any bubbles will come to the top. These are a solid piece of chocolate, so these will go in the freezer for about five to ten minutes until they're firm. And then I'll show you how we did the decorations on the top. Okay, my solid eggs are ready, and I want to pre do the prep to show you how I'm going to, uh, to decorate these. I'm going to start by taking a regular Wilton uh, parchment paper. This is a 15-inch parchment paper, and I just folded it in half so that I get two smaller triangles. The only reason I'm doing this is because I don't really need a large pastry bag. And then I'm going to make a couple of cones. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm using one of my silicone molds. Uh, this is one of the Alan Tatro brand silicone molds and there are different bows in here. And you can use a really nice silicone mold to mold chocolate. It just has to be a mold that has a very shiny interior. If it has a rough looking interior, it won't be a good chocolate mold. But these, these are excellent for chocolate. And I'm going to choose a color for a bow and I think I'm going to go with orange. And I have some melted. And I'm just putting a little bit in there. And I'm going to cut a little bit of a tip off. And then, see if we can see this, I'm just going to press in there. Because this is so small, it's going to be easier to do with a pastry bag. And just like the other ones, if you tap it, let's see, 
Um, I'm just going to push the chocolate into the corners. There. And I'll just put a little bit more in. And that's it. So I'm going to put this in the refrigerator and let that bow harden. And I'm going to show you how we can use this on a bunny a little bit later. In the meantime, I'm going to prepare a couple more bags. I'm going to put a pink in one. And a yellow. You want to have all your chocolate melted and ready to go. And I'm going to do a green. You can choose whatever colors you want for the decorating. Okay. And let's see, I'm going to get my gloves on. And I'm going to unmold these chocolate eggs. There. Now I want to separate these. You don't want them too close to each other. If you put them too close to one another, we're going to leave a couple out. If you put them too close to each other, the chocolate sort of creates a little bridge from one egg to the other. And then when you go to separate them, all you have is a little stripe on the top of the egg, but none going down the sides. So you want to make sure you put them far enough apart. And now comes the fun. Start with whatever color you'd like. Cut a very small hole in the tip. And I'm going to start away from the first egg. I don't want to start right on it. I want it to look like a string going right across them. So I'm starting away from it. And I'm, I'm only going to put a couple stripes on each one. And then I'm going to change colors. And let's add some green. Oops. That's a little a little thinner chocolate. There. And I think that's probably enough color. And I'm going to let those dry a minute and then I'm going to gently move them aside and you'll have the same effect as I have over the here on these eggs. What a lot of truffle companies do um, is they'll use certain colors for certain eggs. So let's say you wanted to flavor the white eggs with an orange oil and so you wanted them an orange color. You could stripe them with an orange and maybe green. And you could do another one with lemon and, and do it with yellow and a green. And they would actually, they could actually color code the, the chocolates by the color of stripes they put on them. So that's just an idea. Okay, and the little spots are really easy. You're going to use the same tip and all you do is make little dots. Don't squeeze very hard because the chocolate is rather liquidy and it'll come out really fast. And that's how I did the little polka dots. Just whatever colors you have in the little um, in the little cones you can use so they give you a nice contrast between the stripes and the polka dots. So we're going to let these dry a minute. We'll get them up on a um, uh, plate and we'll show you the, the, uh, the whole project as, as it's completed and you can see all the chocolates we made today. Okay, while I had a minute I took some milk chocolate and I molded a one of the larger bunnies and again I only did half of it rather than doing this as a two-piece mold. I didn't do any painting or anything else. So there I have the the full bunny and these are the little orange bows that we made um, before. So I'm going to use a paintbrush 
and a little bit of orange chocolate and I'm going to glue this on the bunny. There we go. And that's that. There we go. And now we have a finished bunny that's all made out of chocolate as well. And that is the final project. I hope you've enjoyed this video on Easter candy. Remember that these techniques can be used for any season and for any occasion. Now that you know how to make a three-dimensional mold, you can do it. There are many different types. There's all sorts of animals and sea creatures and all kinds of things that you can make that are three-dimensionals. Christmas trees, if you're in the holiday season, um, the, the Christmas holiday season. Um, the, the coconut bonbons, that filling can be used in a multitude of molds, all kinds of rounds and square and, and really nice shaped molds for different seasons. And the peanut butter cups, well, I can tell you that you can make your own sort of Reese's peanut butter cups. They have molds that look just like a traditional peanut butter cup, and that's exactly the same method. Just make your shell, fill the mold, backfill it with chocolate, and put them in the freezer, and you've got your own homemade peanut butter cups that are really delicious. You can buy everything at Global Sugar Art. We have all the, uh, the tools, the candy writers, all the different chocolate. Um, all the different colored chocolates. Um, we have the lollipop sticks, the cotton gloves. Uh, we have candy food colorings if you care to uh, color your own candy. It's all available at globalsugarart.com. Thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Have a great day.